Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda Rose and I am a high school teacher in Brooklyn, New York. I specifically teach government and economics, so 12th graders. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys how I organize slash how I set up my Google Classroom. Now I've been wanting to show you this for a really long time and although I think this is going to be a very simple video, I try to keep things as simple, organized, and kind of just compact as possible. I don't want to confuse my students. I don't want them to have to look at 5 million different things just to be able to understand the assignments. So I am going to show you guys how I organize my classroom. I am sure that there are so many ways that I can improve this, but again, I'm just showing you what I do in my classroom. This may be things you already do. And of course, telling us how you organize your own personal Google Classroom to make it much more efficient and simple for your students will also be helpful and you can share those ideas in the comments below. Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Please make sure that you like this video and let's get into it. How I set up my Google Classroom. So the first thing is, I'm just going to show you guys how I title my class. Now please keep in mind that this is a demo class. Please know that I have tried to recreate my actual classroom with this demo class. Okay, so keep that in mind. So the first thing I like to do is I like to put the name of the class and then also my name at the top as well. And then in the little subject area, I got this idea from Too Cool for Middle School, Megan. Uh, she actually said to put the days that you're meeting with your class. And I thought that this was a great idea because for my school specifically, students meet with a very specific subject teacher during a specific day and time. So I wanted my students to be reminded of when exactly we meet. So we meet on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 10 o'clock. And of course, you want to communicate these things to your students as well, that you don't just put things in there for the sake of putting them in there, that that also serves as a reminder for when class starts. Okay, so let's go into the first section of Google Classroom, the stream. So what I specifically use the stream for is to list the agenda for that day, the independent work that my students will be responsible for after instruction, the Google attendance form that I have showed you guys how I create also in a separate video. I also list the daily agenda slides, which I will show you in much more detail, and any other videos or work or information, any other resources that I want them to have access to for that day's lesson. So the stream is specifically for this. This is also where I would link the Zoom link for our class. We change our Zoom link every single day that we meet. And so I have to post a new link every day for my students. So this is what my stream is for. It is for announcements. It is for students also to post questions. I do have that option available for them. And this is just the main section for the class. Now if we go into the classwork section, this is where the magic happens. So in my classwork section, I like to house at the top class resources. These are the things that my students will um, constantly need throughout the semester, whether it be um, the sign-up sheet for one-on-one. So we have office hours at my school for an hour. And so I created time slots in Google Calendar where I can meet with students for 15 minutes. They can sign up for office hours and I have that link housed in the class resources so that students at any time can go and book a time slot with me. Also in there, I have the daily agenda slides. I have the Zoom and behavior expectations. This one is not very detailed. It's more of just a cute little like graphic of the expectations. And then of course, the syllabus. My syllabus does not list all of the assignments, but I do like to list major assessments, major projects that students will need to do and what month they will be assigned. I think that that at least, because it's really hard to plan so far ahead teaching virtually, um, but I think that at least is really important for them to mentally be able to prepare uh, for specific projects that will come up monthly. 
So that class resources section I have found really helpful and whenever a student is out or whenever a parent has any questions about um, office hours or what their child is supposed to do that day, I can tell them that they can just go to their child's Google Classroom and check the class resources section. All of the information hopefully that they will need for my class will be housed in the resources section. Of course, you can also add little emojis. I think emojis just always make things a little bit cuter. And so I have also added emojis there for each of those documents. Now, the next thing I wanna show you guys is the daily agendas slide. This I completely stole from Megan from Too Cool for Middle School. And I thought that this was genius, especially because my school, I've mentioned this before, we did not do a really good job at also um, providing content, info, assignments virtually. We were a very like arcade school in the sense of worksheets, textbooks, we hand this out in here. Our students did have access to laptops, but not every day, not all of the time. And so I did believe that my students were going to have a difficult time navigating all of their work virtually and then on top of it navigating it for at least seven or eight classes that they may have this year so this is just a simple way for you to list what students are responsible for that day and also where they can find those assignments and then also there's a slash there for homework. I try not to assign homework too much because my students do have an hour of independent time. So oftentimes that does end up bleeding into their homework. So what I love to do is just put the date at the top. I created these slides on my own. I just ended up creating them in PicMonkey like Megan did as well. And then I just saved them as an image and then I added this image as a background into the slides so that the background is not movable, but then I can just add text over and change the information for every day. The reason why I like this is because I think students can get really confused as to what assignments were due or assigned on what day. So I love that I can easily just say, hey, don't forget to check the agenda slide for all of the things that you are responsible for today. Make sure that you do your do now, your classwork, and your exit slip, and those things will be listed on the slide. What I also love about this is that if students are out, if a parent is concerned about if their child is doing any work, what assignments have they missed, this is also something that you can share with parents. Just make sure that it is in the view only um, for the parent and also for the students. And then that parent can also check whenever um, any new assignments are being posted. So then they can ask their child, hey, did you fill out the enlightenment? Um, station assignment that Miss Rodriguez assigned to you guys. So I think that this is really helpful um, as far as a resource to provide to parents. I know that parents do not have access to their child's Google Classroom, but if you give them access to the slides, at least they know what assignments are being given to their child every day so that they are somewhat in the loop. And of course, I mean, they are parents, so they can just ask their child to see their Google Classroom. I know some teachers also have Google Sites. I personally did not create that this year. For me, I did not think that it was necessary because I'm only teaching one class this year. I only have my government class. Next semester, I will be teaching economics. So it was just really easy for me to just house everything in Google Classroom because I didn't have to jumble around so many different classes at once. So after the daily agenda slides, again, what I would also recommend is if you do have some type of office hours or periods that you're free and you're using that time to meet with your students, creating um, these time slots in Google Calendar are amazing. Because oftentimes it may be really hard to get students to um, admit in the classroom that they may be having a difficult time, especially if they're there with their peers. But if you can just suggest, hey, for anyone that would love additional time, maybe there's a question that you would like for us to go over it together, boom. Or on the other hand, you can say, hey, so-and-so, we're going to meet for one-on-one -on -one time by three o'clock today 
please pick a time that you would like to meet for tomorrow. And so you hold the student accountable by saying, no, we are going to meet, but then at least you give them the choice of picking what time they would like to meet with you to the next day or whenever. Now let's talk about classwork and how I post assignments. So the first thing is I label my uh, topics by week. So week one and the unit, also the days in that week, Week two, the same unit for right now, also the days in that week. Again, for myself, because I only teach Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays, what I like to do is I also like to color code the days. So if you notice, each day has a different color with like the book emoji. I took this idea from Pocket Full of Primary. I'm sure other people do it too, but this was just something where I figured, hey, this is a really easy way to keep it organized and for your students to keep track of what assignments are for which day. Also, what I like to do is keep the most recent assignment at the top. So again, Wednesday, when it populates, it's the only one. But then I like to make sure that Thursday's on top and then Friday is on top. So the day the assignment um, is given is at the very top of that week. Along with that, what I also like to do is just put in bold, I'm not sure if I did it for all of them here, but I like to put in bold, do now, assignment, homework, exit slip, just so that they can see what the assignment is before they actually click it. Along with in here, what I like to do is also add any video clips, any links that students would need. I like to double dip in a sense with the resources. I like to put them on the stream. I like to put them in the actual um, link with the assignment. And if it is a Google Doc, I also like to add the link into the actual document itself. For me, I just figured I don't want students to say, well, I didn't have access to that or I don't know where to find it. It's on the stream. It's linked in the actual classwork tab. And it's also linked in the document itself. Like you can find it anywhere. So that's really what I like to do just to cover every base because not every student is so well versed in technology. And although we're trying our best to teach them how to navigate Google Classroom, some students are just going to pick up that skill a lot faster than others. So for now, I do want to, in a sense, kind of modify this for them and allow them to access materials in multiple different places. Um, also, when it comes to the topics, obviously the most recent week, I also like to house at the top. So week three would be at the top, obviously week two and then week one. So this is pretty much it. This is how I like to organize my Google Classroom. I, again, have the class resources listed at the top, which is probably my favorite aspect of this. I use the stream for announcements, Google Forms, attendance, Zoom links, any additional resources I would love for them to find. And then again, the classwork I organize by day, I color code each day, and I have the most recent assignments at the very top for each week. Again, I'm sure there are other things to this, but this is what is working so far for me and my students. And of course, I am pretty sure that I will have to modify and change as the school year continues. But for right now, this is the system, this is the setup, and I'm really, really liking it. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. If you did, again, do not forget to give me a thumbs up. Please make sure that you subscribe, and I will see you all in my next video.